So now let me just give you an example, a tour through various parts of the world and other uh, inhabitants of that world where we find these organisms just to bring home to you how ubiquitous uh, microbes are on the planet. So to start with what might be a more familiar image, here what you're looking at is pond scum. You're looking at wonderful assemblage of phototrophs and other microorganisms in this pond. And my favorites, of course, are these purple phototrophs. These are the ones that I told you about earlier that are what we call the anoxygenic phototrophs that are not utilizing water as a substrate in photosynthesis, but are utilizing other more reduced compounds, such as different types of sulfur species, hydrogen, or iron. Now, these organisms that we see in modern-day ponds as I told you at the beginning when I was illustrating the antiquity of microbial life with the example about banded iron formations, are absolutely historically important for their metabolism and the diversity of their metabolism and how it's changed the geochemistry of the Earth. Not only has the evolution of photosynthesis contributed to evolving our atmosphere to one that contains oxygen over the course of time, but as I also showed you with the banded iron formations, these type of organisms have likely shaped ore formation as well. And many other important processes uh, have been able to come about thanks to these organisms doing what they do. And it should be noted that this type of metabolic activity, photosynthesis, is one that today we're highly interested in because of our need for coming up with alternative energy sources. And certainly, if chemists were able to mimic what these wonderful microbes in this pond do, we would be able to not worry so much about our dependence upon foreign oil and our fossil fuel supplies uh, being burned. Uh, but that's a story for another day. The point is, their metabolic diversity is old. You see it all around us. And the biochemistry is really quite fascinating. Continuing on with the chemistry and the metabolism of these organisms, not only do they do important things when they're growing, but they also do important things when they start hitting what we call stationary phase. And this is a point in their development where they're not necessarily actively growing, but they're at a higher density, and they're just hanging out metabolically. And when this occurs in their life cycle, sometimes metabolites and pigments begin to be excreted. And these pigments, which are called secondary metabolites, although that name itself may be a bit misleading because they're only secondary in a temporal sense in that they're made after a phase of active growth, but by no means are they secondary in terms of the physiology of the organisms that produce them. Nonetheless, these metabolites oftentimes are used today by pharmaceutical companies as natural products that confer antibiotic activity. And a terrific example of this are organisms in the streptomycete family that you see here in this petri dish that are producing a whole host of wonderful antibiotic compounds. Now, containing uh, in the environment of the soil, of course, are roots of plants. And in this part of the soil, what's known as the rhizosphere, we can find microorganisms as well that are colonizing in a very beneficial way the plant roots. And here is a tomato root seedling. This is an image taken by Hito Bloomberg. And he showed in experiments in the laboratory when he took tomato root seedlings and mixed them with an organism called Pseudomonas that this bacterium was able to colonize the plant and form what we call biofilms on the surface of the root. And this is just one example of organisms that interact with plants. There are many that fall into this category with different names. And the bottom line is that they have a very beneficial relationship with these plants, where sometimes they produce natural products that fend the plant off from fungal predators, and so they serve as biocontrol agents. Other times, these organisms are capable of fixing molecular nitrogen into a usable form and essentially acting as a natural fertilizer.